welcome in, folks. Welcome in. Thank you all so very much for being here. I surely do appreciate it. Uh, we are down a couple people, as you can see. Normally, we would have uh, at least one more party member with us, but uh, uh, don't know where they are. So we're just going to push forward, hope that they join us uh, at some point. That would be that'd be cool. It would be fun. For the better part of it, though, we, uh, we are just too excited. We, we want to play some Dungeons & Dragons, even if there's only two of us, so... You're going to be seeing Monty and Ruby's day off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck yeah. Yeah. With one I when I had Larry with us, obviously. We got super, oh, yeah. some 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 form of super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry will look after us, don't worry, it's all good. He'll keep things on track, no doubt. He's done well so far. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back to the uh, the first session of Dungeons and Dragons here on DMDM Studios for 2023. So excited to be here uh, on the British Invasion Hour every other Saturday. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I do appreciate it. Thank you to my players. And uh, y'all want to get a recap going? Do it, Mash. Come on. Okay, so last session we started in the tavern as uh, Joran the Thrice Drowned uh, met a friend of Monty's from his past. Friend. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he then explained how uh, Monty had done him the dirty in the form of a flashback. Um, and we got to see a little bit into Monty's past. Um, Joran then decided to come warn us that this was happening um, and that there was someone in Peridot looking for Monty and uh, this captain then followed um, him into the cave it turned out to be quite a good thing though because the pair of them joined us in fighting this giant elemental beast which sprung out of the ground um, Suna got knocked out instantly and um, we, we were down the healer so th that was you know great um, this giant elemental beast was kicking our asses. Uh, Ruby had the really not great idea to use a lightning rod on this thing, and it returned the level 5 lightning bolt to Ruby and would have killed her if uh, Joran didn't uh, counter the spell at the last minute. Thank the gods. It was beautiful. Um, <laughs> um, I swear to God, I'm... Never. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's destroyed me as that. Uh, my confidence is gone. So oh, yeah, Ruby's a bit shook up. up. Um, uh, but we did eventually defeat the monster. And on our way back to Peridot, our good friend Joran told us that it is time for him to depart Peridot and kind of just like figure out some of the trauma that we'd been through recently because he died like twice and uh then he had to like fight his dead dad and it, it, he's not had a good time so he decided it's time for him to part ways with peridot and uh we uh left with uh, one-eyed larry flying into the sunset yeah beautiful imagery beautiful yeah. indeed very good um Take an inspiration there. Ruby, you already have it. Okay. Well, both yep. of you already have inspiration, but thank you for the one. Yay! I appreciate it. So with that being said, uh, let us get on into it. We start <laughs> in the tavern. Uh, we'll say probably the day after you guys get back in town. Um, Suna is kind of not feeling too hot after the... Uh, utter annihilation that she almost got faced with by the uh, the giant ball of doom. Um, so she's she's probably just kind of laying low. Um, Captain Drench and Joran set sail uh, the, the morning of uh, the, the following day. And uh, Speed is nowhere to be found. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, everyone's leaving us at the minute there, Ruby. Fucking hell, first Joran... Where the hell's he gone now, Speed? God, never mind. Well, that being said, what, what time is it, by the way, DM? Roll uh, 2d12. I, I will do just that. Um, here's one. You can right-click to me. Yeah, and there's two. <laughs> it is three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I see what you did there. That's clever. It's very good. Two times twelve is twenty-four. <laughs> How many eyes? I see it. Oh. You know what? You never. You never. You never. 
<laughs> Never fail to blow my mind. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank uh, you for the hydrate, Andrew. Much appreciated, buddy. F funnily enough, I've never thought to do that. Ever. I, <laughs> I've never thought to do that. Just makes sense. Yes, hydrate. Cheers. Yeah. Well, it's so three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, right, Ruby. Um, we got some time to kill before we set sail and, you know, just save the world. Just that little small uh, thing. What say you? We go and have a little fun. Slap off some steam. Let I say off. first, we, we like nick a couple of drinks, though, yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, we've had a couple, but I think we need a few more. I say yes. I say that's a fucking brilliant idea. I say, if I say fun, it usually involves nicking a couple before yeah. we get out. So, you know, uh, yeah. All right, straight to the tavern. Let's see what we're doing here. What was the name of the tavern again? I forget. It's been so long. The name of the tavern itself. It, it's been so long that even I've forgotten. I'm going to have to pull up the map. <laughs> it is the uh -uh. Weaver at the Loom Tap House. Uh, I'm gonna call it the tap house because I won't remember that. <laughs> oh wait, excuse me. It depends on which bar you guys are going to. The one in the middle of the town is the Weaver at the Loom. The one on the harbor that you guys frequent, wind in the wave. Ooh, Ooh. should we try the the one that we haven't been to? Let's see what's going on. Yeah, let's go to the new one. We haven't been in there. All right, let's see. Right, let's introduce ourselves to the. Uh, what was it called again? The something at the the what? The Weaver tap at the Lim Tap House. The the Weaver Tap House. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. At the so very least, we can like introduce ourselves to locals <laughs> and let them know we own some uh, of the fine establishments in town. Well, they should fucking know by now, to be honest. But <laughs> basically, we're going to walk in there. It's like, yeah, we own half of this fucking town. Soon we'll be owning this bar, and uh, <gasps> yeah, you should get to know us. So <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So you make your way into the Weaver at the Loom Tap House. You see that at this time of day, given that the harbor is open once more and the sailors that make Port Town of Paradox Point are now able to weigh anchor in a nice little safe town here, there's not that many people at the Weaver at the Loom Tap House. You were used to seeing a good portion, like, lined out the door um, in the evenings when you guys were first arriving in town and or, uh, the, the first amount of time that you have spent here. At this juncture, it's 3 in the afternoon. We'll call it 3.10. Walk across town from the uh, the shop. And uh, from the outside, there's like nobody that you can uh, see like lining out the door like you see. Uh, and when you make your way towards the door and you can see inside, you can see that it's almost, almost completely dead in here. Fucking hell. Ruby, you seeing the state of this? No vibe at all. How about you say we get in there and, and fucking start <laughs> one? We'll get at the very least, going. we can like wet our whistles before we go for a, a little venture down somewhere else. Love it. <laughs> love it. Right. I'll kick down the door. <laughs> um, I'll just like boot it open and just like, we're here. And then I imagine it's just like a random fucking guy just cleaning the glass, like, who? <laughs> and Ruby and like uh, when I Larry are just like right behind him, like just the two, like basically halflings because she's a dwarf. So yeah. <laughs> the power, <parrot>, like, wah! Yeah. <laughs> just... This is like the worst like uh, buddy cop movie ever. <laughs> we'll have uh, you there, barkeep. Uh, we'll have um, uh, two ales. Three ales, sorry, I forgot you, Larry. We know how he likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I oh, know. We fucking love it. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Uh, yeah, how much is it? He, so the barkeep, first yeah. of all, is a uh, kind of tired and, and haggardly old halfling that is <laughs> standing up on a stool. Um, the number of patrons that you can see are kind of clinging to the corners. They uh, seem to have their heads down. Um, it's almost empty, to be quite honest with you. The bard that is clearly drunk, <laughs> swaying from side to side, <laughs> puffing up a storm, was about to start playing and singing when the moment you kicked in the door <laughs> caught him off guard, and now he's taking a moment to, uh, to recover. 
You ask the barkeep uh, for some drinks. He looks you both and says, uh, depends on what you're having. <sighs> Three ales, uh, your finest ales, and also, who's playing tonight, by the way? I see there's someone over there coughing up their fucking guts. Um, are they any good, or what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> That's all half-hand. Half-hand. <laughs> what sort of music is it? Is it like jazz, or is it like uh, sea shanties? <laughs> is it like... Um, is it uh, uh, wizard punk? What is it? Wizard punk. That sounds amazing. And like Ruby just flicks the silver coin at the the bard, and like it's whatever hat he's got. And she's like wizard punk. <laughs> he looks at it, looks at you, and just starts. Playing. Yes, thank you. She doesn't know what wizard punk is, so she will accept anything he plays. She just thinks it sounds awesome. Uh, I know this song. <laughs> yeah. He's butchering it goes. as far as you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Fucking up the towns, stealing all your shit. Yeah. I remember this. We used to sing this. We used to sing this back on the... Uh, back me and Drench used to sing this all the time. Uh, it's called... Uh, funnily enough, it's called Stealing All Your Shit. It's about stealing. <laughs> it's about... Ste- it's about going places over the seas and just taking what you want and living a life of freedom. Oh, yeah. That sounds Those cool. are the days. We need to get back out of sea as soon as we fucking can. As soon as we find speed, we're out of here. As we, you look the, at the Old Hand, calling. Monty, you, you can see that. True to his name, the lower half of his right hand is missing. Uh, he also has an eye patch, scraggly old and grey beard, a matted old grey hair, and a face that looks like it has been bleached by the sun for ages. That is the mark of a sailor, if you've ever heard. Absolute legend. I'm gonna chuck him a coin and just be like, uh, just just give him a little nod, like acknowledgement, like you're a you're a fellow sea dog. He drunkenly gives you a, a smile and continues playing his stealing all your shit. <laughs> Stealing all your shit. Stealing all your shit. So the bar yes. tells you that uh, five copper for a nail. Yeah, sure. Um, I've got that. Yeah, uh, I fucking expect so. <laughs> Larry kind of hops off your shoulder onto the counter, looking at you and then looking at the barkeep expectantly, like you're gonna pay for him. Ruby. Okay, I'll pay. Mm-hmm. I'll pay for all three of us. I'm happy to pay for the first round. He happily squawks. But, uh, Valky, um, Ruby, I think you should also buy a drink for the, uh, the fine musician that we've got on stage. He's, well, I say fine, he's actually fucking but- butchering this, to be honest, but, you know, he's trying it, and, you know, he's trying his best. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's five copper. You literally dropped, like, 20 gold on a barrel. <laughs> like, it's not going to break the bank. It's two silver <sighs> for four drinks. Fine. Oh, two fine. silver for four. That's fine. I'll take four for two silver. Yeah, cool. Yep, he, uh, he puts four ugly, grotesque mugs of ale <laughs> that looks quite sour and almost a bit festering on the bar in front of all of us. Um, Ruby, as a dwarf, this is an insult. Monty, as a halfling, this is a tragedy. (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck is this? We paid you five copper for this. No, five silver. Five silver? Just two silver. Two silver. Two silver. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He uh, he looks at it and looks at you guys and <clears throat> whoa, uh, un- uneasily like scratching behind his head like he's not really proud of what he's serving but he is not really trying to come forth with any information about 
Everybody's I'm just, just saying, I'm just saying, I think there's a reason we frequent the other tavern. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, you there, Bucky. I've got, I got to be honest with you, and I don't take this the wrong way. I mean it in all the best way possible. But this is a fucking shithole. And you and that is shocking. So, I'll tell you what, why don't we, uh, why don't we give you some pointers? Uh, it seems like you've sort of lost your desire to, uh, you know, barkeep. <laughs> oh no, are we gonna buy the tavern while we make a frustration roll <laughs> into the tower. <laughs> I'm down for this. Let's buy a, let's buy a tavern whilst everyone's back is turned. Depends how much <laughs> it is, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Persuasion to the tower is on its way very very shortly. Uh, here it comes. Persuasion, persuasion. Oh, Monty, you suck. Right. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, I didn't Let's do it in the tower. The tower. I'll do it in the tower. Your choice. If you're happy for me. Yeah. You I'll, 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 you I'll take go either way. You rolled a 10. You could go either way, so. I'll, there you go. Let's see how that does. And what you did was a natural 20. Which oh! A it's a skill check, so there's no automatic success but a 19 is still fantastic on a persuasion roll like this he looks once more at the mugs of ale rather shamedly kind of takes a deep breath sighs and looks up at you guys like i know how to keep a bar we've recently run into a bit of trouble we're normally the kind of family in around here the you lot you Adventurers and sailors, what have you, who stay down at the uh, the wind and the sea, cater to the people of the town. Just want a nice family evening, you know? But a few, a few days ago, maybe, I want to say three, but honestly, time has been kind of hazy. Like it's just been the same day. We had a New customer come in from town. He heard that a ship was coming in larger than most of the others in the port, and they sent an emissary before they arrived, saying that they were going to need room and board for about 50 men. Now, that's far more than the wind and the wave could seat at that time, given that they already had a bunch of customers from other vessels. We took their overflow, and we heard, I heard, something that I probably was There was this conversation between the captain and the first one. Sounds like it got a little bit out of hand, and, well, one thing led to another, and the sound of a gunshot rang out in the night. Captain didn't come out. Mutiny. I, mutiny. Most foul mutiny as well, it seems. That's well. Cool. Oh god, it gets worse. They they had something. That was what their argument was. About. The captain wanted to get rid of it. First mate was valuable. They had to hold on to it. No buyer could pay what it was. I think they left it. Whatever it is that they left, we haven't been able to find. I've searched everywhere. But misfortunes fall in my end. I don't know what I can do. I'm sorry to hear that. I am. I fucking love a pub. It's sorry to see the state this is in. Ah, is there anything we could do to help? I, uh... I can take a look, I guess. I can detect magic and see if there's anything, uh... going on, I guess. He looks at you surprised. Like, you'd be willing to do that for him. Sure, I mean, I've got a blacksmith in town and we've got a magic shop and stuff. I mean, we've been together. we're on the association together. We're gonna oh, stick you're together. Oh, you're dwarf. I've yeah. Heard of you. Okay. Yeah. 
well, if you did, you'd really be helping me out, and I don't really know how I'd be able to repay you. Business has soured completely to a degree where <clears> I don't know if it's even salvageable, but you can give me my in back. I would really... Uh, I'm Gordon, by the way. Gordon. Hey, Gordon. I'm Ruby. Monty. And this is Larry. What? Pleased to meet you. That's him. He's saying he likes you. But he thinks the place is shit. Alright. Just detect there, like, magic on myself. Um, okay, please. Uh, tell me exactly how that spell works again. Because I know that it can be blocked out by stuff. Uh, it says for the duration of your sense the presence of magic uh, within 30 feet of you if you sense magic in this way you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic okay so down here in the lower level of this tavern next to the fire and the bar itself opposite all of these tables and what have you there is no faint magical aura or strong magic aura to speak of, other than um, Monty's sword, the accoutrement that you have on your brain. Monty's big fuck off great. Do uh, you mind if I take a look, see? There's no customers upstairs I might be upsetting. Uh, there's nobody here except for you lot and these seedy fellows. My word, Ruby, rubbing salt in a wound there, don't you think? Well, I didn't want to scare off any customers they do have. It's this fuck all here. <laughs> <laughs> they could be sleeping. Maybe they work night shifts. You don't know. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But yeah, right. I'm down for uh, an investigation of the, the tavern. Um, I'll... Take a, a, I'll leave Larry downstairs with some nuts. He's fine downstairs. And can keep the uh, bartender company. He seems a bit worried and upset, so Larry will cheer him up. Um, we'll sing him <laughs> Dance, Larry, dance. Dance with the bar to <laughs> some uh, wizard punk. <laughs> Is that thing where um, like, around in a circle? <laughs> uh, that's, that's fucking adorable. Um, yeah, so Ruby's gonna go for a little wander upstairs and have a poke around the bedrooms and see if she can uh, detect anything. Yeah, absolutely. So, as you make your way upstairs, you make your way into the room that's directly opposite the stairs. Make your way into the next room. Next room. Next room. Finally, when you make it down to the end of the hall, to the, not really a suite, but the largest of the rooms, and see a stain of dark maroon set into the floorboards. And you get something. Yeah, Monte. Yeah. Come have a look at this. Oh, okay, right, okay. What we got in there, Ruby? I, uh, should I do an arcana uh, medicine check? Um, you can make any checks that you would deem feasible in this situation. I'm just talking about, you know. There's a stain here, Monty. I'm not, uh... I know one or two things about stains. Well, that's why I called you, man. That's why I called you. Um, let's do a... Mm... What do you reckon? Medicine or nature? Uh, <clears throat> sp spooge check. Spooge check. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go medicine. Let's do medicine check. Okay, um, so this is certainly the blood, probably the blood of the captain that uh, Halfling Gordon downstairs described. Where you're getting this kind of vibe emanating from, it seems like it's kind of rushing up from this blood, some kind of magical reaction. Right. Does blood count as water? 70% water. Okay, so I can shape water. I mean, is dried blood count as water still? You'd be pulling it out of the fibers, I suppose. The, the yeah, water yeah, yeah, yeah. of the blood. The iron yeah. and stuff would stay in. Well, the other basement. Person, person. 
I just I will say above the table, you're currently making <laughs> shape water, whatever it is, like the most powerful spell. Well, ever. okay, right. So because Avatar like... last Avatar Blast Airbender logic, they did blood bending, right? So I was thinking if this if the if the magic is in the blood, then rather than remove the floorboard, I could just remove the blood. Um and take it with us to see what it is. <laughs> um, I will give you a arcana check. Uh since your spellcasting modifier is wisdom, you can make it a wisdom arcana check. Uh Oh, that's how I changed it to a wisdom. Okay. So you set about to begin pulling the blood out, but this is quite a tall order. You are successful in extracting the water content from this from these floorboards, but whatever other base minerals might be in there, do not come. You do, however, notice that healing from the detect magic. Well, you would you'd have to drop concentration. I say we just rip the fucking floorboard out. I mean, it can, we can easily take the floorboard out. I was just it's just a, it's just a curiosity if the spell is if the detect magic was in the blood. If you or cast if it's it again, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, do it. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if I could do it, but okay. Um... Knowledge, knowledge is booty. All right, let, let's put the let's put the absorb uh, the detect magic back on then. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. It is still uh... in. The floorboards, and it is also in this container. Like it's is it anywhere else? Substance. From what you can tell, make a perception check. Just see it, this faint glow coming out. There's this like small gap, and that is what a stronger presence of the aura emanating from. Say yeah. the words. Say yeah. the words. Yeah, on you go, Monty. Let's lift this up. Let's have a look, see. Right. I'll just smash <laughs> my fist through it and then just. <laughs> Strength athletics, please. <laughs> oh, okay. See, here's no. me being like scientific and being like, oh, there's some blood there. I, I need to like examine it so if I can like pull it out and have a look at it. But now we're just gonna smash through to it. <laughs> Fucking right. <gasps> no problem. Yeah. Yeah, how do you do it? Like, like a knife through fucking <laughs> butter. Um. Yeah, just smash it through, just rip it out. Um, probably takes half the floor with him because he's so strong. Um, <laughs> yeah, the bed flings across the room now. Um, but yeah, here you go. Will that do there, Ruby? Can you see anything else? Is there anything? Is there anything underneath as well, like where he's ripped it? Yeah. You can see a small chest. Chest is about the size of a dwarf's, like forearm, I would say, insofar as like length. And then about um <laughs> uh, I'd say about double yeah, about about the size of that, maybe double. Like blow that up by about a proportion of two. And uh, okay. make the whole thing out of iron. What? Uh is it is it locked? Is it Yes. Is it a padlock? Can I please bring that out and try and rip the padlock off? It is not padlocked, the lock is set into the chest itself. Shite. <laughs> um, what we need is a rogue. Do we know any rogues? Classes are not something that descriptions stuff. In this do we know any? 
Do we know any? <laughs> Sorry. We could, uh, we could see <laughs> Jeremy, actually. Um, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, our blacksmith. Uh, Jeremy could potentially tickle it off for us. And if I remember right, he might have some doozies and spells in his uh, character build. But, you know, uh, <laughs> let's not go back that far. But yeah, All let's right. go back downstairs and collect Larry and uh, see if we can... Uh, is is the is the uh, the because obviously I've still got detect magic on. Is the um, the aura of the detect magic uh, the the aura? Is it remaining as we've removed the stuff? Then I love that you asked me that question. So, the strongest amount of the aura that you have experienced thus far is now happening. It is coming mm -hmm. from this chest. It's. Like, whatever tiny, itty, bitty baby cracks would exist in this chest, um, again, it seems that is where it is coming from. You also see that blood has dripped down from the floorboard onto this chest's lid and sunk in into the, sunk into these cracks and made its way into whatever is inside. The blood is also now magical. Same aura, but significant. The blood that is sunken into the floorboards has that same resonant aura. And the water that you extracted from the blood in that floorboards that you have put in that vial is the faintest. But it's still there. I, uh, I'd like to, uh, get someone to clean that up. <laughs> Because I feel like that's not going to stop unless we do. Um, so I think, yeah, can we clear out all of it and let the let the, the owner know that's what we've done? Because I feel like we've destroyed his shop for no reason. Now, but, uh, don't be too hasty, Ruby. Uh, do we want to tell the man at the halfling downstairs, Gordon? Do we want to tell him about this chest? Or do we want to just walk out with this chest and take whatever's inside for ourselves. I say we don't tell him about the chest. I say we took the floorboards that are corrupted and tell him that those are what the problem is. I like you, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> you. Because now we've got a reason to remove the floorboards um, because it had the blood on it and we'll say it was the blood that was the problem. Done. Let's do it. Well, cool. I'm gonna hide. Can I hide the? Um, uh, I'm gonna take off my cloak of manta ray, and I'm just gonna wrap the chest up in that, and just hold it under my arms. And um, Ruby, you go and show him the the things, and I'll just slowly walk out as if nothing's happened. What you say? All right. So Ruby's gonna like want to have the blood stains floorboards removed um we can both do that right yeah do you want us to roll smashed. for that are we okay for that <laughs> do we need to they're, roll for they're that they smashed as shit right <laughs> yeah um so she's gonna take that downstairs and uh, go see uh what was his name graham gordon gordon, gordon. And, I'm and i'm gonna walk out with the chest wrapped up gordon found your problem you need to clean up better that blood went everywhere it's uh, fully tainted with rubbish, is all this, and we need to burn it instantly. But what about the thing that they were arguing over? Couldn't find it. It might have been, uh, you know, somewhere else. But this here, this is tainted blood. I found all underneath the floorboards. We're going to get rid of it for you, and hopefully that should solve your problem. Um... That doesn't really make sense, but I don't really understand magic, so I'm going to believe. Well, yeah, we, we defeated all them skeletons, remember? And that horrible, scary ship came into town, and we did help the mayor, the governor, with the weather and stuff. I mean, we get around, really. Did you know we defeated some strange, horrible monster in the sewers as well? Hmm... Really? A a a a, no, a a morgue? A morgue? What's a morgue? Never heard of that. Morgue. Yeah, it, it was some weird, horrible creature that was like it ghoulified our friend. My God. It 
So there's all sorts of horrible stuff going on in Peridot at the moment. So if you hear of anything terrible, you come to us and we'll help you out, man. Free of charge as well. We've got to stick together as business owners. Well, I mean, yeah. If this is really going to fix everything and get my, my tavern back on track, then... Shit. Look, I don't know for certain. For any day. Once really? Business <laughs> takes back off again, and it's <coughs> financially feasible. Oh, of course. No, yeah, of course. Oh, excellent, man. It's good to make friends in the in the town that we call home. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember hearing the the governor saying that he was like giving a ship to some people. Is that you guys? Yeah, we're hoping to uh, set up trade routes with like other ports because you know Paradox so isolated out here. We we want to try and like expand uh, trade and hopefully bring in some new things into Peridot, you know, maybe like new beers and fruits and things like that as well. Well, I mean, if you're gonna be shipping and stuff, I'd be more than willing to put some kind of with you guys. Okay, uh, assuming everything. So uh, gonna... We'll do our best. Like I said, though, we're we're hoping this is what's gonna cause it, uh, fix it. But if there's any issues. Let us know, and I'll come back and do my dick tech magic stuff, and we'll 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 sniff it out for you. All right. Well, thanks again, Ruby. Uh, you guys have a good one, and we'll be here. Come on, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, see me, you'll see me leaning up against the wall outside if you're going. Yeah, she's got like the the wood under her arm, and she's like, right, come on, let's go, and, like, take this all back to the blacksmith and dump this in the furnace. Well done, Ruby. <laughs> We've become quite the pirate. I couldn't help but hear over here you discussing like trade routes and shit. Um, we're totally gonna fucking rinse this guy, are we? Yeah, like, obviously. <laughs> Beautiful. Like, Sooner would never forgive me if we didn't charge him like triple. <laughs> you almost sounded like a, a legit business person in there, and I was getting worried. So. Uh, uh, good. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's just a uh, habit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, sweet. Let's go see Jeremy. Let's see if we can get pop open this little chest that you're here. <laughs> so, you make your way. Um, honestly, it is literally just below your blacksmithy um, on the map. If you look at where your blacksmithy is, uh, I'll, in fact, I'll show you too. Uh, I'll take a look. Um, this right here is uh, where the inn is, and this is where the smith right next <laughs> can we just like uh, instead of walking all the way around can we just like go up the difficult way because <laughs> I don't see Ruby and I don't see Ruby and uh, Monty walking the sensible way around <laughs> yeah we'll climb up sheer cliffs just to get up there <laughs> just because oh no I'm joking so we'll, we'll, we'll just walk normally but um yeah, oh, let's go see Jeremy. <laughs> Although, can you imagine, though, trying to get home from the pub and we'd be like, there's our house. <laughs> it's up there. Good thing we brought the grappling hook. It's a good job I've got spider climb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. And I've got, I think I've got a levitation ring or something. Oh, you do as well, yeah. So, so he's just passed out drunk, just floating home. <laughs> Uh, right. All right. To to Jeremy. Is it notate? No, it's um, telekinesis, isn't it? Telekinesis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, so so we're assuming like Monty and uh, Ruby are like quite a few pints in at this point, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so so we stumble into the blacksmiths <laughs> with a stack of bloodied wood. <laughs> and a glowing, scary chest of uh, steel. Yeah. Jeremy! <laughs> Jeremy, mate. As you, <laughs> as you can see, uh, we've had a few. <laughs> and uh, look what we found. <laughs> I'll shake it. Uh, he is, I need uh, to burn this wood. Burn it proper. Don't breathe the fumes. Just burn it. Burn the, what? Then... That she just drops the wood and then just like it, she's looking for another ale because obviously we live here, so there's gonna be more booze. Okay. <laughs> you, you quickly find a, uh, a cask that Jeremy is probably like the same day, like stick it in. Nice. 
It's like think? if you're you, if you're drunk, that's that's exactly what you do. Jeremy, then you drop it, give him an order, and then walk off. So that's what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's surprised. Um, he sees Monty carrying this big fuck off chest, uh, slamming it on the um, slamming it on the, the table in front of him. He goes, "Well, uh, it's gonna take me some time, but I can take a look at it if nothing else." Uh, you got twenty minutes. It might take more than that, but we'll see what we can uh, uh, Give me a time. Give me a time. Come on. I we not know how many more we drinks we can get in before we come back. That kind of depends on your own personal tolerance and the amount of liquor you're able to shove down your gullet in like a minute or a given amount of time. All right, you, you, yeah, you're smarter than I remember, Jeremy. Would you um, would you just kindly fuck up this box so we can get whatever shit's inside while me and Ruby here continue on with our day of fun? Thank you. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Well, right. do you want do you want a drink as well, Jeremy? He's, he's working, Ruby. He's working. So he takes some time. He sets it over by the forge where he has a, a little bit brighter of a light. Takes out this magnifying glass, starts looking on the inside of the lock itself, messing with a set of locks and probes to try and uh, crack it open. Five. And... Fifteen minutes pass, and he's starting to get visibly frustrated. Got a, a sweat pouring down the side of his face, and he kind of forcefully rips the now that you can see broken lockpick out of the chest. He slams the tools on the table, takes a wipe off his brow, and then just like takes Monty's drink, grafts it in like one swallow, and then slams it back down. <sighs> You see him walk over to the anvil, take up his hammer, and just start slamming into <laughs> the lock of this chest. To no avail. After another few minutes, he gets frustrated with that as well. Slams the table, throws the hammer on it with a loud clang, clang. It bounces and he just kind of looks defeated for a moment, sits down on the anvil itself with his arms folded, kind of like a 45 degree angle before he... Hey, uh... You know... Some chests are more than just chests. Some of your folk, actually. They like to make these things called dwarven treasure boxes or, or dwarven puzzle chests. I think what we have on our hand might be one. Fuck. Oh. Oh, uh, uh, I wish we didn't drink so much now. We're going to lose our brains. <laughs> we had like six drinks while we were waiting. Uh, I was I counting how many, how many minutes of five he did, and I did like half a drink for every five minutes. We must be wasted oh. now. <laughs> um, but I'm also not good at brain things anyway, but I'm pretty good at arm things. Um, yeah. Right, okay, well, we'll have to take a crack at it. Um, Do this. Have you got any ideas, Jeremy, how we could get started on this? Do you know what puzzle is? Uh, Did we not do a check on the box? Did we just forget to do a check on the box? Never did a check I on think the so. Box. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, we just immediately said, Jeremy will sort it, and we started smashing the shit in <laughs> it. Should I do a check on it? <laughs> How drunk are you? <laughs> Quite. I think it was disadvantage. Intelligence. Investigation. Uh, in investigation. Uh, intelligence. How do I do disadvantage? You can't get the bottom uh, left. Uh, do, 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 do. Investigation. I've got a plus two. You would have had a 20. You would have. <laughs> Instead, you run your fingers <laughs> along the, the side of this this chest rather drunkenly, kind of just trying to go in a straight line, but like going like whoa, like kind of along the ridges and the, the, the cracks in it. You have Monty pick it up so that you can look at the underside. 
And when he sets it back <laughs> down, <laughs> you can hear this hollow ring, as if it's coming from a very specific section of this treasure house. One of the handles on the sides, it rotates it. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn. The, yeah, I was gonna say. Turn. I was trying to think of a way to say that I turned it. That wasn't. We're, we're there. We've an seen innuendo. it rotate. We've seen it rotate. We're both going. Think, think. How's the book coming? <laughs> like, like, I was like, uh, Ruby fiddles with it. And I was like, that sounds too dirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, mm. Ruby goes for it and turns the. She's like, to see if anything happens. <laughs> it jostles, and it. It's to about 45 degrees before you can feel some mechanism inside of it preventing it from rotating farther. What if I turn the other handle on the other side? Nothing it does not rotate at all. Right, I'll sort this out. I pick up the box and I walk outside and with my ring of telekinesis, I'm going to put it up in high as I can in the air and just let it drop with... Um, What's it, what's it called? Is it terminal velocity, is that right? I don't know okay. if that's right. That's not How high can you make something go? Magic. How high can I make something go? This is an excellent question. Let me have a look at my inventory and see exactly what that would involve. Uh, da -da -da -da. The ring of telekinesis. Here we are. Uh, you can cast the telekinesis spell at will. So I'd, Let me just Google telekinesis and I will tell you now. Thank you, Google. If, if Google wants to sponsor the stream, then... Yeah, thanks. the character thing. Here we go. All right. Sick. Uh, turn of the nation is... 30 feet. Oh, I got 30. Oh, no, that's a creature. Object, you automatically move it 30 feet in energy in any direction. Yeah. The range is 60 feet. So you can move it at all. You can move an object that weighs up to a thousand pounds. So I will say that given that this whole thing is like iron and there's something inside of it, the whole chest itself weighs a, a good like say probably like twenty-five pounds. It's it's heavy, it's on the wheel. Um so it's well within the range of that. So, are you lifting it as high as you can make it go, or are you throwing it? Are, we, are, you, are, you, not, are you not worried that we're going to break the mechanism and never be able to break open it? <laughs> I've never been worried about anything before. I'm not about to start. I'm not about to start an really. Right. I'm going to... I'm going to... He's going to do gonna, it to us now. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm going to throw it up as high as I can and then suspend it in the air with my telekinesis ring and then drop it when it gets to its maximum height. Like just outside the front. Not indoors. I'm outdoors. I'm not going to smash a hole in the roof. I'm going to... Smash a hole outdoors. in the floor. That's fine. <laughs> yes. So you throw it with fine control as well? Uh, yes. Okay, so because um, I think it would be funny, uh, I'm going to actually have you make a roll for this, whereas normally it would just kind of be a given. Uh, make an arcana check. Because you're drunk, mainly. <laughs> yes! Monty rolling an arcana check. This to be fair, Monty should only roll disadvantage when he's hungover. Uh... <laughs> if anything, you're the one that's harder to get drunk. Or the one that, that it's harder to just... I, I didn't, I didn't. Penalties I'll, I'll roll it twice, you take the lowest. There you go, I forgot to press the thing. One and a four. Um, oh. so... It's better than I thought I'd do. <laughs> you thought you'd do better than a... <laughs> worse than a one? Worse yes. than a one? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, uh... I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we just see it, like, hurling through the air at, like... It goes up with the speed of, like, an arrow shot, a, a cannonball shot from a, a, a cannon. It just goes soaring nice. up. And for a long moment, it's just kind of quiet. And you're, or, like, maybe a good, like, 
I don't know, 30 seconds or so, you're kind of just like standing around like, I think fucking go, like, I'm gonna come down to the sun party, right? And then finally, like, it falls down, down, down. Oh no! Give me a perception check. Oh shit. How far down is it? Is it in the, in the sewers? Oh, I already, uh, I don't, we're the same person, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Derek are like the same person. It's so fucking weird. Monty, you make another one. Um, <laughs> you roll another one. Um, Ruby, would you like to make Sounds a perception about right. check? <laughs> Sounds about right. It's a total of five, uh, which is still... Oh, wait, wait. Uh, perception. I'm going to do it with disadvantage. Supposed to be our day of fun and we're going in the fucking sewers. You can barely make out a <laughs> coming from the well nearby. Really? Uh. The fact that you hear it kind of divine providence uh, to be honest with you, it's it's like barely, and you can only think of one thing that makes that sound. It's on the other hill, across the way. We need to go in the sewers, man. Jeremy, Jeremy, come here. What's up? You got a, you got a special project for us. <laughs> How would you like to go down a well into the sewers and um, find that box that you failed to open and redeem yourself? <laughs> Yeah, that's not like really in my contract. Uh, yeah. Sounds more I like I can amend speed. the contract. Uh, she holds uh, That's a good point. Uh, let's do this. No, let's right. do this. I'm up for going in the sewers. Let's go. Right. I mean, yeah. if it's just us two, and we we defeated the morgue, and nobody in chat is going to be mean and do a divine intervention on us. Um, <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. Well, that's what happened last time, if you all remember. That's how we ended up fixing the lich in right, uh, the sewers. <laughs> have a drunken stroll through the sewers. Let's do it. Come on, Let's Ruby. Go. <clears throat> a nice romantic walk through the sewers of Peridot. Not for the first time, might I add. In we go again. Oh, boy, Derek's like, and I have a map just for this occasion. <laughs> I have a map. That's fantastic. It all works out. Uh, but we've been going for an hour, so we're gonna we're gonna take a break here, folks. The first of our breaks for this broadcast. Thank you so very much for being here. We will be back in uh, just a few. Welcome back, folks. Thank you all so very much for waiting. I surely do appreciate you. We see our friends. Booty. We see our intrepid pirates elving down, down, down once more. Into the sewers. Oh, there I am. Well, I didn't think we'd be back here so soon, Mum. Uh, uh, do you know what? Me neither. <laughs> yeah, here we fucking are. Again, on our day off. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Let's find yeah. this chest. Oh, this, <gasps> we don't even know what this booty is. We're just taking a word of this barkeep Gordon. And now we're after this chest. We don't even know what's inside. Could be well, he said it's somewhat bad. So, like, if it's not treasure, we can always take it to forget. That's a very good point. Forget. Forget yeah. might remember something. Well, I doubt that. <laughs> uh, but okay. Right. Here right. go. I'm going to take my right. sickle out and, like, off my belt and carry that and be ready. <laughs> right, so as you plunge into the darkness, you can hear, without a perception check, something that immediately pumps your adrenaline and sobers you up, because it triggers the memories of the last time. Back mm -hmm. footfalls, small mammalian creatures scattering a light or sickle and at the sound there is a uh, uneasy feeling in the pit of your guts 
And when you turn towards the darkness and see people watching, pairs of beady red eyes. Uh, Ruby. Ruby's just gonna like tick her sickle and she's like, Git! Git! <laughs> I don't want to fight you today, go away! Monty will just nervously go, uh, uh, Yeah, uh, fuck off! <laughs> and she's like, Right. They won't come near us if they're afraid of the light, right? So yeah, let's they... just keep going. Oh, I know what I'll do. This usually scares them off. I'll flex. I'll just start flexing. <laughs> at, the, yeah, uh, at the sign of a larger and intimidating creature, as well as the imposition of light into a normally dark day place, the rats go scampering off. The eyes turn away from you. And in their chitter-chatter and pitter-patter of footfalls on the stonework, you swear to fuck you can hear a whispering voice underneath. Oh, did you? Fresh. What is it with these sewers? Mate, we're not fresh, we're pickled. I haven't showered for 17 days. <laughs> You're not friends, we are ripe. <laughs> right, let's suck it up, Monty. Oh, goodness. No, I lost uh, that. <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> Buy me dinner for this fucking hell. <laughs> right, let's go. Uh, did it come from the left or to the right by Monty's perception? Keep perception, Trey. I mean, yeah, yes, yes, yes. That, that would usually help when, when perceiving, yes. <laughs> Monty, you can swear it's coming from all around you. Hmm. All right, buddy, let's just go for this. In and out. I'll follow. I'll follow you, Ruby, all the way. All right. You, you can lead though, because uh, you know uh, I'll watch our backs. We'll go back to back. Back to back. <laughs> we'll slowly go this way. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Ooh. Um, okay. Let's move on a little bit. Uh, oh, this is where uh, Suna picked up Greg. Uh, hey. Oh, what's this hole? Yeah, I don't know. Something happened with <laughs> Oh, oh. Did we. Uh... That wasn't solid. That wasn't a solid path last time. That's probably what it was. Yeah. When I uh, changed the directory. Transfer that over. Yeah. Am I meant to have darkness around me at this point? Can't see. Yeah, oh, Ruby gray. has a spell on. No, that's, that's my I fault. have dark vision. Did, did uh, you say that you had to your sickle? I thought that your sickle Yeah. that wrong. Oh, I think my sickle might also provide light, but like I have dark vision. Double check for us what your sickle does, because I thought it did, but I. I... Otherwise, you guys are in darkness. Except... Yeah, by the way, I can't see Dick Ruby, so please. Um. Yeah. Okay, moon sickle, moon sickle, moon sickle. There we go. Uh. Uh, glimmers softly with moonlight while holding this magical weapon you gain a bonus to attack and damage made with it and you gain plus two bonus to spell and attack rolls uh, in addition you can use the sickle as spell casting focus it doesn't actually give doesn't like actual light, light. Okay, it just says glimmers softly um, can, can I take a torch buttons? out then sure. and I've got a tinder box as well okay, so maybe uh, I'll carry it. Or do you want to take it, Monty? Because I can see. I would like to take the torch if it's okay. Yeah. Here you go, Monty. Your weapon is That's very true. Oh. Ruby, Ruby, can you please take the torch and I'll keep the torch. Behind because, you know, I want a firm grasp of my, my club. <laughs> so Ruby I'll, produces uh... a torch and magically lights it. Um, I've got a Tinder as well, actually, to be fair. But whatever, whatever's easiest. You, uh, you produce a torch. You can hear the sound of the 
water running next to you. It's slow and kind of clogged up in the drains, probably. The overwhelming smell of rot and sapient waste uh, is permeating your nostril. The growth of fungal life and strange roots of sewer on a flora produces this weird kind of crunching sound. Walk. What do you To be fair, this is an improvement on the last time we were here. Yep, because exactly like there were big fleshy walls. <laughs> it's true, but last time we were fucking sober. So yeah. Right. So sensor direction wise, which way where where's the entrance in but, right, so we didn't we gotta figure out where it came down. So we were at the blacksmiths, came down through the blacksmiths. I think we need to keep going this way, and we should come round about where the smithy is. I like your thinking. <laughs> Lead the way. I'm right behind you. Right. Let's go this way, pal. Continuing into the darkness. We have a torch. Ah, oh, something splashed. Oh no. Here. <laughs> above more turbulent waters. The outlet. I'm gonna have to turn that on. It's gonna make me wee. <laughs> <laughs> The sound of your wow. footfalls on metal plates resonates off the stonework and the chittering small creatures. Away, away. I'll just shout out into the darkness. <sighs> you can see them on the wall in this junction. You can see them looking at you from further down see some beneath your feet in the water, climbing on the underside of the mountain. Rats, some the size of your normal everyday rats, some the size of small dogs. And you can swear that if your perceptions aren't that fucked up from the alcohol, if the size matches, at least a couple of pairs of eyes in the size of well, bigger than a small one. Uh, hmm. Got some chunky boys down here. Right, okay. I... Mm. I regret not preparing animal friendship. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but right. um mm. if we're going in there Ruby we might as well have a swig and I'll just uh, get out um, some ale apparently I've still got a cask of ale on me which is wild just like little flasks of yeah. uh, little teeny tiny casks they're yeah. like individual casks <laughs> Here's some courage before we walk through this ratty tunnel. We're like... <laughs> I, say, I say we just run through at full speed to the other side. What do you I reckon? mean... Fuck it. <laughs> I Absolutely. mean, I could turn into something and run through as any, like, as a, a bear or something. <laughs> Well, if you turn into a bear, can I ride you? Yes. <laughs> can I can I mount Ruby as a bear and charge she's through? She's a size large creature. You're a size small creature, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a half one. If she's a size medium creature, then you can technically mount her. She's a size uh, medium creature normally, so you could sit on her shoulders technically and mount her. But it doesn't, technically it doesn't work that way. Um, yes, if she becomes throw, like a... Uh, I don't mean mount like that. No. <laughs> uh, if she were to turn into a bear, it, it, all she'd have to do is turn into a size medium bear, and you could her as a battle mount. 
Right, let's go. Let's go for this then. I yeah. am going to wild shape into I'll the hold black the torch. bear. <laughs> Unless you want to keep the torch in your mouth. I don't even know what happens to my equipment when I turn into a bear, to be honest. Don't um, question it. Bear, bear, bear magic. It's good. Uh, <laughs> like I'm a bear with my sickle in my mouth. <laughs> Is it a black bear, right? Yeah, a black bear's big enough, isn't it? I'm just making sure. That's the one that I had in my stats, anyway. I didn't remember. Oh no, I've got Greg's the polar bear and I've got a reef shark. Oh, look at that. Look at that black bear. <laughs> cute face. Oh, look how cute. Ooh. Right. I'm going to climb onto Ruby's back. Can you still see? Um, no, the map's gone. The map's map gone. gone completely. Okay. Yeah. So, so with Monty on my back, I'm just going to roar. As loud as possible down uh, the sewers, and like, yeah, that's our warning to. Um, giddy up, I, I guess. You see now? <laughs> no. Then never mind, I'll just put. Cool. All, you, all the viewers, you know what bears look like, right? Just imagine Ruby's a bear. Oh, I'm there, I'm there. I've got it. Yeah! Let's do this. I can't right. talk because I'm a bear, but you know. Whoa. Roar! Yes, I agree. Onwards. Yeah! Hey, Monty, you can just like move for us. Because, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> this is awesome. Riding a bear and a sewers. Best day off ever! <laughs> The sound of Ruby oh, in her bare form roaring over the uh, the turbulent waters is enough to drive eyes once more back into the darkness, and you can hear again under their footfalls and under their chittering a voice speaking to them all. So come closer, meat. Come. Allow my children to feast upon you. Well, I'll shout out. Um, have you got our chest? <laughs> <laughs> a prize, you see. This chest, you hear a t t t Bollocks. <laughs> But you, I come closer, mate. Come to my fine. As long as you give us a fucking treasure. <laughs> See that? I just FYI, my friends are bare, so you better watch out. Can we jump over that gap? That's like. 15 feet. Not without a running start. Right, Maybe we were running. We were already running. Do <laughs> so you want to back up and then go make a running jump? Gonna... I mean, we knew it was coming up, didn't we? So, I mean, like, if we That's knew fun. it was coming up, we would have just continued running because we're, you know, we're, we're in it for now. We're, we're, we're going full uh, chaos. We ain't stopping. Yeah, we're making pace here. Absolute <laughs> pace. Just drunkenly riding bears through the sewer. That's what you want. That's what you want. Love it. Absolutely love it. You come to the chamber that you once had to clear out, or chamber, I guess is a bad word, uh, the, the corridor, the tube that you had to clear out last time. And you see that it is wrought at pieces. No. Right. I would like to use my telekinesis spell at will to just move, make a nice path, maneuvering the shit out of the way to make a nice clean place for uh, me and my new bear friend to walk through. Could I make a suggestion instead of like moving the actual like feces? 
Yeah. But if you like push something through it. Like a shield. A shield or something and <sighs> Do we have anything big enough? Is what I was like I wasn't sure if we had anything big enough. But yeah, no, if you, if you can literally just like move the feces, it's fine. Because <laughs> that was like it was it's lots of individual items, is it not? Is that not, is it but yeah, yeah, is it fine in the game mechanic? It'll take a bit of time. I just imagine like Monty's there as as he's moving, individual pieces of rat shit <laughs> in a sewer telekinetically. <laughs> just going, it's my day off. You like fun, he said. Now look at me. I'm fucking moving rat shit down here in the sewer. He's just like having a bit of a moan, thinking this is what he's doing on his day off. <laughs> oh, I love dramatic irony. Oh, okay. So you uh, you finally, after probably like 30 minutes of sobering <laughs> laborious work, you uh, you have moved enough rat excrement to safely trudge through it. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a sentence you want to hear on your day off, isn't it? Out. And because you said it was it. sobering, we are going to then have a drink once we are finished. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. Oh, right. God. Yeah, we'll have a drink. Right. Come along. I've made the path. Um, and <sighs> go through the other side here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ruby, I agree. <laughs> You've never been so wise. You make your way I'm just going to stay as a bear and make uh, uh, Seely do like a full improv on his own. Make your way through the tunnel. Secret tunnel. Uh, secret tunnel. As you do you remember, the bear. remember that, Ruby? When we freed that guy from that cage over there. Good uh, yes, I know. I was exquisitely <laughs> strong. You can move yourself, Ruby. I'll just move the bear to the world. Yeah, I'll just keep up. Don't worry. You make your way up to this corner and um, see that that guy that was turned into a boar. And you see his broken and battered undead form. Even the rats... Ew. There he is. Good times. <laughs> <Wouldn't>... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like, you know, everyone nearly died again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was good. In Ruby's fact, Jor just like. Jorin did Ooh. die. <laughs> As you, uh. Yeah. Make your way to this choke point. You recall Joran dying, him stepping in between Suna and the morgue and getting fucking in one Being single action stabbed in the chest with that centipede that was wrapped around the skeleton that was the morgue. And as a bonus action, reanimated as a ghoul immediately. Um, and you remember Speed having to separate his head from his body. There is like no I said, <laughs> good times. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Ruby. We'll be out of here soon. And I'll, I'll stroke Ruby's bare head and just be like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> 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 you're Ruby, you're not a fucking bear. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Ruby. Right. <laughs> Onwards. To be fair, though, if you had a friend who was a druid who kept constantly turning into animals, wouldn't it be, like, so tempting to just be like, danger yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in puppy! As you, uh... I can't reach Ruby because she's the bears on top. As you cross the field, you can see a, um... a number of changes in architecture to Everything is fundamentally the same, but it feels incredibly, incredibly odd, as if there's a befoulment 
some kind of anus stasis at least. There's something familiar about it. As you make your way threshold. Familiar laughter battering bone. Return. To deliver it to me. Wait, well, like, it's not the lich dude again, is it? If we're bumping into the lich dude again, I'm quitting this game. <laughs> I can assure you it is not the lich. <laughs> He's like, changing that. <laughs> change shit. I'm joking. <laughs> I like what you've done with the place. Um, I see you still got all this weird wall cabbage, I see. Nice. Um, where are you? Show yourself. I can't move because the bear's on top of me. That's a common common theme in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> can't move. The bear is on top of me. Right. I'm going to throw that in, I guess. Right. You made, made it here a lot quicker than last time, I had. <laughs> you make your way further into the chamber where you can see fully the bones that were left over decades of slaughter. No longer have that weird flesh like growth growing over them. Instead they have been arranged and organized. We'll call it throne. But it's not a throne like you and I would. It's an icon. It's a large Thirteen pronged here, with bones laid on top of one another in laid, carved etching, in abyssal that burn your eyes. At the very base of this is a stack of pelvises set down with femurs in between that you can only imagine serves as what is seat. Small. About the size of Monty, I would say. Rat. He is hmm. familiar because you killed him last. Ooh, okay. Long time no see. How you doing, mate? <clears throat> Looks a bit perturbed at the casualty. Speaking. Killing. Let's just closer. Someone slain. I take this from myself. But you. Back to destroy. Well, Ruby like full on yeah. like snow snarls and growls and like. Arr. Well, uh, you can fucking try. As I'll, re <laughs> I'll repeat, I've got a bear, so you know you can. You're more than happy to try, it, but just before. This potentially comes to blows. I would just like to say, or ask rather, do you have that chest? He lifts his leg and kind of in this like nook, pushed aside bones and see dull iron chest kind of wraps that same sound you heard earlier of nail iron.
have you been able to solve it, mate? As such thing. Me too, mate. We got something in common there. Um, well, let's fucking dance. Shield. <laughs> Initiative. Yeah. Let's yes. Do Sorry to just straight up go into a fight, but yeah, fuck it. I mean, I couldn't talk anyway. I'm, a, I'm there, so it's not like we could do much. <laughs> you could shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason that I haven't actually taken uh, understand animals is so that Derek has to always speak like an animal. I love it. Yep. So that's the one spell I will not ever be taking because it forces Derek to become an animal and intonate like an animal. <laughs> I absolutely love it. <laughs> All right, well, the big old creature goes first. I should, I should say the big old creature, the rat hawk goes first. The one that you guys have fought once before. Bloody furry through my headphones. My day off. <laughs> my day off! He is going to. He slinks away into. It is Ruby's turn. Ooh. Right. I'm the black bear, so I have multi attack, which is uh, bite and claws. I don't have the stats for Greg either, so I can't even check if they're the same. Every time I open up, um... oh, thank you. Every time I open it up, it's lost all my actions for some reason. See updates. Yeah, I have Greg, but and then I also have the reef shark, but it's lost all the bloody things. Yeah, it's really yeah, annoying. Right. <clears throat> so we've got where rats. One where rats. One rat larger king. creature. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go for the where rat because he's there. I can't move the bear. Can you bring him into the where rat, please? And on the combat tracker, I'm gonna come in with the bite on the where rat. Ooh. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Um, has it already done the damage? Nope. With that one. D. Oh, there we go. Oh. You rake your claws across this creature. It is no. Oh, no it's fine. It is no larger than. I mean, it's not as buff as Monty, but it's no taller than Monty. This halfling were rat that you just rake your claws across takes no damage. Because it is a lycanthrope. And you instantly remember what it takes to hurt a lycanthrope. Oh, silver. shit. Or magic. It's, uh... Silver or magic. Oh, uh, that was dumb. So there's no point in me doing my claw attack. So um, you're a bear, you're a bear. You know, these things. <laughs> that was just really dumb of me. I just wasted this, uh, an attack. Uh, no, it's not, it wasn't dumb. It was just excellent okay. RP. It was very good. Uh, well, I can't do anything else then because none of my attacks are going to hurt it. So I'm just going to run interference on that for a minute and then I'll... You can try to make a next. grapple with your second attack if you'd like to. I'll grapple it, yeah. That's okay, a... so roll the attack first, and if it's successful, then we make a pose roll. Okay, um... So with that one, just drag it onto him. Yeah, okay, now roll strength athletics. I'm going to roll dexterity acrobatics. Strength... Uh... Duh, 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 duh. Oh, I got a natural one, so you are probably going to grapple this creature. Um, 
I don't know how to do it on the black bear rolls. Uh, just roll a d20 then. It would just be a strength check. Um, so that's definitely gonna win because the, the rare rat got a natural one. So how do you grapple it? Um, just like, yeah, going with the teeth and grab it by the neck and just like pin it down. He's like, like bear <laughs> And then you see him reaching <gasps> for a weapon at his belt. Uh-oh. Is that your turn? Yeah, I can't really do anything else now. Rising from a pile of bones when the Ratok calls for his children is a actual swarm of sentient, well, not sentient, but coherent rat mass that once enough of them have collectively run together, they begin to lose shape in coherency in their own form and become a solid, writhing, kind of ooey-gooey mass of rat. <laughs> awesome. Akira style. <laughs> have fun with that, Monty. <laughs> it charges Monty. Yeah. Okay, so. When you start your turns, you're going to be making Christmas saving throws, folks. Mm. I'm not going very much charisma. Same. <laughs> Ooh, that's one miss. How many attacks does it get? It makes four bite attacks. Good grief. Holy balls. Ooh. Oh. It's not doing great on the rolls, though. It's really not doing great on oh. the rolls. Oh. Come on. That's well. one hit out of four. All right. Too so quick for you, rat mass. Monty is going to take some damage, and then he's going to be forced to make a constitution saving throw, which he passes because he's a barbarian. Of course he does. So, it's just like, as it, like, charges you, it tries to uh, body check you, and you're fast and sturdy and strong enough that you just kind of, like, resist the blow and just, like, put your arms out and probably get pushed back a couple of feet from the, uh, from the exchange. It's, like, swarming up with, like, one, two, three, and then, like, it's so fast that one of its bites manages to slip your guard and, like, nibble on your rib. It hurts pretty fierce, and you can see this kind of, like, yellowish ichor substance that's, like, seeping from the wound, but from what you can see, it's all in the blood that's running out, so no need to be concerned. Nice. That's awesome. How, um... Okay, no, I'll wait till my turn, sorry. No problem. The were-rat, which is currently um, pinned by the back of its head on the ground by the bear, is going to try to stab at the bear with its short sword. It gets a hit. And it is going to go for... How many attacks does it get? Two attacks. Um, I'm going to make the second one. Don't stand on my headphones. Oh, so he's just wildly stabbing uh. Ruby. Uh, the first one just kind of like glances, I guess is the right word, glances off your thick hide. Um, but in his wild stabbing, one of them actually manages to get through and just kind of nick uh, the top of your head where blood is starting to run down over one of your bare eyeballs. Marr. Monty, is your turn. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna... Actually... Let's play this sensible. Let's not just start wailing. Let's... The pool that's in the middle there, is it sewer water, water, yeah. or something magical? Sewer it water. It is sewer water. Okay. I would like to, if possible, um, I'm going to try and throw this creature in front of me into the water... Uh, I'm essentially going to try and drown it, which is, okay. I know, like, really fucking brutal. Um, <laughs> but that's what I want to do. That sounds awesome, dude. All right, let's get a... Uh, first of all, let's get an attack roll. If you are successful, then you can attempt to grapple. Okay, I will do an attack roll. So not with your uh, magic weapon, just a regular um, strength and uh, proficiency bonus attack roll. 
Okay, so plus a two-handed club would be, well, wouldn't be club. That's uh, plus six, wouldn't it? If, if you have a club in there that's not magical, then you can use that because it'll be the same. Yeah, that'll be the same. Plus six, yeah. Uh, on this thing. That's definitely a hit. So now we're going to make opposed strength athletics. Uh, this one's going to make dexterity acrobatics. He gets a 13. Okay, can I roll it in the open or do you want it on no, tower? No, roll it in the open. It's fine. Ooh. And you got a 14, beating him by one. So you have successfully grappled this creature. Now, you have how many attacks per round? I have two attacks per round without other things. Okay. So, attached. I will say that you can attempt to throw him in here with a successful strength athletics uh, roll. I'm going to set I'm the DC at 15. I'm going to try and do it. Okay. Strength athletics in the, the open. Oh, 15 good. on the die for a 21 Man. total. Fantastic. Yeah, so paint us a picture, Monty. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna um, just just wrestle with this thing after it's like he's dodged a few, he's taken a quick nip, uh, nip at one of them from one of those attacks, but it, he just grabs his head and just crumples it down into 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 like. Put, put it down into its chest and just charge with him and throw him into the, the, the sewer water. Um, he's going to try... Um, he's going to just, like, hold out his hand then while he, uh, and hold him under the water, which is so brutal. But he's just going to, like... He's going to just charge with him and, and hold him under the water, this rat okay. monster. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and move you guys over here. Probably this is going to be the most direct spot for me to put you. Um, yeah, so when you crush that head, we can like see bone and like blood squirting out from the violence of your grip and twist. And then we see other heads starting to form along its writhing mass of body as if Ooh. its form denies any physiological deterministic properties. It just changes at will. You hurtle it into the water, and it's trying desperately to get enough flesh up to get air, and you're... Fantastic turn. We go to... Uh, the black bear is not ruby. It's ruby. That's actually not there. I will be right back. I do apologize. Two seconds, but no you guys carry on. All right. So... <clears throat> Rat talk... Mm. Yeah, he's not on the. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it. Mm. Oh no! I almost rolled that on the ruby. That. Ouch. About to get it's fine, but if you kill the bear, I, the damage doesn't carry over or anything. I just, just revert back, right? So, makes three attacks, one with his bite and two with his claws. As he comes appearing from above you, he drops onto your back, sinking like you have the, his whereat child mm. pinned. He bites you in the same exact spot, delivering a horrible, horrible blow. You can feel yourself kind of freeze up and almost drop the wear at. But he's not done yet. He does not get advantage on this one. But he does hit. Which does take you out of your bear form. Right. He has one final attack. Mm-hmm. Does not hit. So, cool. he drops on you, pierces the top of your bear head with his teeth, and then, like, rates one claw into your neck, and when he rends the flesh, sending bear blood spewing from it, you, in a magical... <laughs> of energy, right. are 
It's my turn next anyway, so yep. do I still have a grapple hold on the wear rat that I had before? Yeah. <laughs> right. So team. no no right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you what I'm thinking. So literally as Ruby's transforming back from her bear shape because she is literally like holding onto this thing by her teeth. So like she is biting down onto this thing and this other one's behind us, and as she's transforming back, she's just gonna grab both of them with her hands and she is gonna cast as soon as she can. Let me do the thing. Thunder wave. Because everything in 15 meter radius is gonna get shocked to fuck. Okay, so you're gonna have to drop the ground <laughs> to do that because. Um, well, yeah, I know, but I mean, like, not literally, but like, she is literally right next to them and she's just gonna go, ha <laughs> suckers, and then just like, boom! <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, Would that also affect the Rat King that's in the. No, puddle? he's underwater. I mean, it'd hit the water, but. That's water, uh, uh, water would absorb out. most of that glow. Yeah. Um. Okay, go ahead and target both of them. Remember how to do that yes. uh, with your token selected control. control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, not the red king. That one. That one. Um, I'm you also gonna, gonna level it. Yeah, no, but I'm gonna if I level it up to a three, mm. then drop it. Well, uh, we need to make it a safe. Oh, I know. I did it on myself. I'll just <laughs> I mean, that's what I did last time, but you Ruby, know. Ruby, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, make sure you don't have your self selected. Uh, you just have your token, like, like you, you're just on your token, and you being selected. How drunk is Ruby right now? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> well, that's why I, that's why I included that she's, she's holding onto them because then she knows she's got her direction right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so make sure that you uh, roll the saving throw into the window. Uh, I, I have them both saved. You can go. Oh, okay. Um, that one. I did the wrong one, didn't I? Right, so if I just... Where am I putting it? Go ahead and uh, put the save. Oh, can they mm. use my uh, inspiration? Failed. No! No, the, the creature failed. Oh, the creature failed. Yeah. I thought I failed. Also, I um, always read that the wrong way around. Yeah, do it again real quick uh, to get the rat off as well. Uh... He succeeded. Okay, now go ahead and drag the damage. All right. Hell. So was that a third level you said? Yeah, it was a third level I was okay. going to do it at. Roll the extra damage die. Uh, you can just roll a d8. I'll play it. One d8. Here you go. Yes! Okay, so that's an additional 8 damage to <clears throat> the were rat, putting him at 16 wounds. You have severely fucked up this were rat. Yeah, how does it, what does it look like? Yeah, no, literally, she's transforming back. She still has, like, her teeth into the back of this were-rat, and she just kind of, like, grabs a pair of them, and she's like, <laughs> just lights up like a little lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole of her just, like, sets off with electricity with this full-on gobbo grin. <laughs> <laughs> well, they uh, they take the uh, they take the damage. The rat hawk cries out uh, in anger. The were rat cries out in pain. Um, good good job. Was that your turn? Uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't think I can do anything else. Uh, okay. Yeah. The rat king is being held in water. He's gonna try to break the grapple. Will you please roll a strength acrobatics check? Or a, a strength athletics check. He's going to be rolling oh, strength athletics. Oh, God damn it. He's rolling uh, dexterity acrobatics. You can do strength athletics. I will do that. Oh, it's beastie. <laughs> You're holding it there. <laughs> <laughs> it is the wear -at's turn. Don't mind me, Roby, just drowning this thing over here. <laughs> so, do they get pushed by Thunder Wave? Um, let me have a look. Uh, do, 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 do. Might be a choice. 
Um... Cool. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, sweeps out from each creature within a 15 foot cube, has to do the constitution, saving row. In addition, unsecured objects need to move. Um, so no push. But then, you know, it says, uh, it just says objects okay, are so pushed 10 feet, not people. Okay, so then he does not. All right. <clears throat> um, well, it's his turn. Um, She was holding them anyway, so they couldn't go anywhere and had to hit the full force to, of it. Yeah, you had to let go of the grapple, but cast this. Um, okay, he is going to risk to run away from you. Get an attack of opportunity if you... Uh, I have a my sickle in my hand, or I did do before wild shape, so okay. that would be in my hand. Okay. Uh, do I just do the attack? Sickle roll. attack, yeah. Onto him. Ooh! Nice. Nice. Uh, that one. He takes the full amount of damage from your sickle. As you, uh, <laughs> carve the sickle through his flesh, it's like carving a hot knife through butter. It just, like, straight through, and you can see where the sickle cut it's sizzling, as if this weapon itself is anathema to these Nice. But he does run away from you, and <laughs> seeing a thing, he is going to load up his hand crossbow and try to shoot you. And he gets a natural Rude. one. <laughs> he gets a natural <laughs> one, which you very deftly just <laughs> deflect with your moon sickle, which it just shatters into a million splinters. Oh, that's so badass. <gasps> Monty Beef Castle is returning. Right, as I'm holding this thing down and it's just it's just not getting out, is it? I'm going to secure that thing. I'm going to take my net, my fishing net, my trusty fishing net that's served me well over the many years, and I'm just going to throw it over the, the, the top of this Rat King and just let it get caught up in the net and be caught uh, just 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 floating there. And he's not going to be able to Is it a weighted fishing no net? I believe so. It's a proper fishing net. Okay, the Rat King sinks into the water. <laughs> We're playing two totally different games right now. <laughs> there you go. The Rat King Except sinks into the water, uh, beneath sight into the black reaches of the dark green gray sludge. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> Fishing days on the old ship, on the Doom Hangman. Right. How many bloody ships have you been on, Monty? I've been on at least. I think I count it now as 24. 24. No, nah, no, nah, it's three ships I've been on. <laughs> anyway, we're in the middle of a fight. Um, I, um, we, could, we could be doing an anime backstory whilst we're fighting, it's fine. Yeah. I'm going to then um, go over to Joy. Actually, no, I'm going to fuck this thing up. Um, I'm going to go over to... Can I make it to this rat? The where rat? On the other side? Uh, probably not. I'll probably get to there. Oh, Is it like a it. ten feet diagonal oh, jump? <laughs> and, and what's your movement? Twenty-five. You could literally little legs. Right here. Oh, sick! Now it depends how you want to do it because that net was an action, but um, yeah, that, then that would be an here. action. Um, which would be something different than the attack action. It would be using an item. Yeah. Uh, so you can move there and close into combat range with this guy, but you're not going to be able to attack into that. Can I bonus action for rage? Yes. Okay, I'm going to add that on now. Just bear with me one moment. And I shall put this into effect. I'm going to drag that over onto my boy. Please let me know if that's gone through successfully. Wonderful. I think that's the first time it's ever done it successfully. There we go. No, I used to do it, and then it broke for a couple sections, and then they yeah. updated and it fixed. Oh, I think it was the module that was broken. Beautiful. There we go. End of turn. All right. Well, we are two hours in, folks. That is the end of the round. We are going to cut to a break.
Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Uh, before we go, uh, let me give a quick shout out to uh, RPG Inn and the Shady Sale. You had probably seen the ads over in the corner there, but um, you can get yourself 10% off of a custom DMDM Studios dice case by using code RPGINN at checkout over on ko-fi.com slash the Shady Sale. You can use that link right there in chat. Thank you very much to RPG Inn and to Patricia. Love you guys, and we will see y'all in just a smidge. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Thank you all so much for waiting. I surely do appreciate it. We are back at the top of the turn order. With the rat talk. <laughs> also, send good vibes to Will. He's very sick. Oh. Oh, Will. Love you, Will. All of you. All of my love. As I get ready for the rat talk to try and put it hurt on um, Ruby. That is within you as well. Okay, all creatures within 15. That means even the wear rat is gonna be Oh <laughs> shit, man. Not mistaken, this is good stash. Nope. Each creature. Yep. <coughs> okay, what, what is it? Do, right? What's he hitting us with? Necrotic damage. Oh, I don't want to do anything about that. Oh, I love it. Those necrotic dice are sick. Twenty. Twenty necrotic damage. Oh, shit. So, he, like, grabs the ground beneath your feet, carving his nails through these bones, and as he's doing so, he's Tearing a rend in reality through whatever leftover essence of soul might be clinging to these old dead bones. As he does so, the ground cracks open in black light, along with this kind of purple violet hue, screams out from beneath. And the wear rat explodes in a shatter of shadows into the ground. His form returns. And the rat hawk laughing and shivering. It is Ruby's turn. That was the best Christmas carol I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, run this? Uh, it's actually not that dissimilar to what we were talking about how to use my new spell earlier, except instead of uh, dropping it into a meat grinder, I was just going to hold it under the water instead. Um, would that be something I could do in one turn? Not in one turn, no. No. But I mean, I can still, I can still grab it. Potentially. Make me a... Uh... Are you doing a Monty? Make me an Arcana check. Okay. I'm trying to... <sighs> Demons can't drown. Well, I know, but demons can. But oh, that's oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. What after yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I was thinking I might confuse it actually. Okay. Um, because if I drag the wisdom saving onto it, don't I? Yep. Uh, that's, that's a level four spell. Fails the save. Drag the effect. Yeah, right, back down to a bubble. Scroll, 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 confusion. Is there effect to drag on him? There might not be. Yeah. Okay. What is the um, use this spell? Um. Because she's got her sickle out and she just kind of like uses that as the focus of her magic. Um, and she just kind of like flicks it up and kind of like throws like a magical aura over its face, um, just to puff in its face. So it's like, ooh. It's <laughs> just <She's> like, <laughs> we can see its eyes like change 
size. One of them's like really big, one of them's like really small, and like a chameleon, they're looking off in different directions. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here uh, in case it tries to move away from me because then I can try and attack it if it tries to move out of my thingy, can't I? So, yeah, I'm gonna stay where I am and end my turn. Fantastic, uh, Monty. Right, I'm currently <coughs> pretty ragey. Um, I will just say, was above the table. Or I suppose maybe Monty would like to know as well if I do need to. Run. Was the thing I just threw in it over a demon also? The which thing? The the rat, rat, king. rat king. I don't know if Monty would have reason to know that, but you can make an arcana check. If if I may, if that if if it, I mean, look, if this thing stays underwater for eternity, trapped under a weighted fishing net, that's fine. But um. What if it just like crawls out twenty years later for this big mortar? <laughs> Get dropped to its knees. Monty! <laughs> oh no, oh. Uh, oh yeah, we go. Right, Let's I'll... stop giving the DM ideas, please, Mash. Just stop it. Is that a one? You have no reason to know something like that. <laughs> you got a one. Alright, that's the third one I've rolled this second. Sorry, buddy. It it's alright, it's his day off, he's allowed. Um, <laughs> uh, he's gonna go over to this ratok then, pretty pissed off. Uh, he's gonna do some damage to it because why the fuck not? Um, okay, so yes, he's got his sawtooth great club. He's gonna throw it in the direction of the back of this. Ratok, right in the center of his back. You it's a mat one again. You're me, dude. Oh my god. That's the fourth one I've rolled. That's this, this That's session. the second one in a row as well. This is the second time you've rolled on two ones in a row as well. Am I allowed to use inspiration? Of course. All right. Do I just get to reroll? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Here comes another one. I was going to offer you my inspiration, man. I can fucking feel it. It's not good. 18. Oh, it's alright. Hit. Okay, sick. Take that. Here comes some damage. Blam! Second attack. Same thing, but this time I'm gonna sweep its legs. <laughs> oh, yes! Nice. Surely that takes them off. Um, here comes... A... Here comes damage. It's not great. It's not great. Bonk. Uh, I'm going to make it a frenzy, seeing as it's going well. I realise I should have had advantage on um, my initiative as well, but never mind. Um, let's do frenzy. Where's it gone? There you go. Never mind, I'll activate it later. I'll just remember to put it on. Um, it's good. It's good. It's really, really good. I'm very pleased with this. This is brutal. Oh, I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy with that. I've just absolutely clubbed this thing. Um, it's got... that, that third one was to its knees. Yeah, you're just beating the shit out of this rat. It's shrieking and crying, and it is not feeling pain, but it is It's Ooh. feeling its form being disrupted, and it's really fucking mad about it. Can I just do like a little action at the end, if you'll allow? I just want to say something to it, first of course. Okay. I'll, uh, having just hacked at this thing's knees and it's sort of bent over a little bit, I'm just going to hold up my sawtooth great club and just say, solve the puzzle box or we'll kill you. <laughs> it won't be able to solve it. It's already told He's us it can. Looking at you with these eyes like... Confused as shit. <laughs> like, what? You want me to? You want me to solve it? I told solve it. Or oh, that's the end of you, my friend. <laughs> I... And you got two minutes. Go. <laughs> I'll sit back. I'll just lean against my sore tooth great club. To be fair, it is confused. You can choose to end that effect on it if you want. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna leave it confused. Okay. If it if it wants to if it wants to go if it's confused enough that like it's gonna try and like <laughs> like I, I don't know what it's gonna do. It's confused. It needs to make a d20 roll at the start of its turn first because it's confused. Uh... Just bullying this fucking rat. God, <laughs> like confused. Up. It's, it's, he has no idea what way is up, but it's like, yeah, okay. Got a twelve. What happens when he rolls a twelve? Uh, oh, the close D and D beyond. Uh, he solves all puzzles. <laughs> he solves all puzzles. Yeah. The oh, chest just pops open. That's Caliera, is that? Oh, legend. Uh, I know. Uh, okay, okay. I just want to go into my spell. Uh, 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 confusion. Here we go. Um, assaults and twists the creature's mind, uh, spawning delusions and provoking uncontrolled action. Each creature in a 10 foot radius sphere. On point, you can choose da, 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 da. an affected target can't make reactions and must roll a d10 at the oh, start of each turn to determine the behavior. Got a two. So, yeah, he got a two. Uh, the creature doesn't move or take actions this turn. So, he's just nice. looking at you confused, muttering like, Children, my little rat babies, I wonder they are true to me. And there's like some rats that come like scampering down off the walls and like wrapping around him. And he's like, mm, yes. <laughs> this is fucking weird. It's a cross between like Gollum and Dark Crystal. <laughs> the Skeksis. That's, like, that's, that's all I can imagine now with that voice as well. <laughs> it's weird as shit. So that's all he can do this round. Cool. I'm just gonna smack him around with my sickle, if that's all right with you. Um, Be aware, you might kill him. Do we not want to kill him? I thought you were gonna have him solve the puzzle box. <laughs> How the fuck's he gonna do hey, it's that? It's your turn. It's up to you if you want to end it. It's totally your turn. Yeah, I'm not gonna say shit. It's up to you. There we go. That's it. Okay. Oops, no, wrong one. Sorry. I hit him twice. Okay. Do you have multi... Can you attack twice? No, 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 no. I can't, no. I uh, I just rolled the attack to hit twice or something. I don't know what I did there. I'm sorry. Good. You rolled damage. He did not die, <laughs> unfortunately. He didn't die. So you just, like, sink this sickle into his back <laughs> thinking you're just going to, like, rend him through, but... This demonic form, though it too seems to be like carved against by the sickle, it like pushes the blade back out of you without him <sighs> being. Uh, and uh, she's like, Monty, finish this and let's get out of children, here. Children, children, I'm, I'm about to return from whence, from the, the ma, the great black beyond. Children, and you can hear the ground beneath you. Rumbling, Monty. As the burrow speed of this creature has finally allowed him to climb back up from the bottom. From no! The side. And it's going to be getting an attack of opportunity. Oh, oh it's my no. day off! Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, not an attack of opportunity, a uh, attack of the I mean. Okay, okay, okay. Which, the first one that he had advantage with, your preternatural instincts kick in, and you jump up just as the ground beneath you <laughs> explodes with force, and it is climbing and clambering back out. Nice. It's got more attacks! Try it. That one misses, too. That one misses, too. <laughs> well, this is just this is just pathetic now. That one doesn't. He's that not going to deal damage everything. to you. He's going to jump into the water with you. 
Monty can break it. Or uh, dexterity acrobatics, good choice. Uh, I'll go. I'll go acrobatics. No, can I go athletics? I'll go athletics. Come on. It's in the tower. So it does not pull you in. It snaps about, and as you can feel it pulling against your flesh, you are fast or strong enough to wrench free from its grip as it clambers back down in its mass into the water. That's all of its movement. That is the rat. Has it still got um? Has it still got my net like anywhere on it? It it went down, and then oh, it God, went sideways, to get and then it went happened. up. Ruby, remind me to grab my net. <laughs> it's necrotic rush is recharged. It needs to roll a d10. Mm. You got a seven. What's a seven? Uh, a seven. The creature uses its action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. If there is no creature, it does nothing. So it snaps out and bites you. Oh, wow, wow, you do wow, manage wow. to keep concentration on the spell, but when it sinks its um, like teeth into your shoulder, it tears out like a huge chunk of flesh, and it's like just like gnashing between its large protruders. Okay, um, cool. I'm gonna your turn. smack it with my moon sickle again. Um. That hits. that hits. Fuck yeah. Fuck um, yes. How do you kill it? There. <laughs> um, as it's like chunking into her arm, she just fwoff and hoiks off its head, just like clean behind the ears, and the sickle just slices through like cleanly. Um, and it just like drops to the floor, and she's just like, ow. Can I just say that's the best use of the words thwoff and hoik I've ever heard? <laughs> Um, am I able to use a uh, heal or as a, like a combat's over a, a thingy action? Combat's over. Is it? Oh, is it over? Did we as kill it? Because... You have slate. Normally, if you used healing word, you would be just to answer your question. Yeah. If you use healing word, because that's a bonus action. That's can. the one. Yeah. Um, that's what I was not thinking. cure wounds though, because that's an action. You used your action. Yeah. You could still. I never remember which way it is. Yeah, it's okay. It's confusing. Um. But, with the demon killed, its fell magics upon the myriad rat forms in the water dispels, and almost all together with the sound of thunder, they uh, resume their natural and into the water they just <laughs> start desperately trying to scramble out once more, like all over your feet, over the bones and everything. You see some like scrambling over your chest as they push for the dark corners of this chamber and the cracks <coughs> behind the walls once more. Monty. Hi. Uh, how sentimental was that net? Well, it was given to me by my father <laughs> when I was just a wee lad and he said, never, ever, ever lose this net because... <laughs> Otherwise, um, uh, you will never be able to catch fish again. So I swore never to lose this net. Um, why'd you ask? Are you, are you going to go get it? Well, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you just hear what I said? It's the okay, so you're going to go get it then? Well, yeah. It, it, it ne My father told me that it would never fail to get a catch. So... Um, how deep is this water? It goes far beyond sight. I'll be right back. I'll dive in. Oh, <laughs> that's what I wasn't going to do. <laughs> I'm gonna need first Constitution check. I'm gonna need you to make for not just like hurling immediately for jumping into sewage, like raw sewage. Um. So go ahead and roll that for me, because that's going to mean you're immediately going to lose your breath, and you're not going to start drowning. 
A bit to breathe underwater. I've got the cloak of manta ray on. That's good. You might still throw up. It's <laughs> fine. He'll probably just think it's because of the drink. He's drunk. Does that numb any of the effects? So what do you need? Sorry, con. Con, con yeah. Right, it's on its, on its way over. <laughs> I was like, I could transform, but I really don't want a wild shape into a mm. shark and go diving in that. You were pushing me to jump in there. You know you were. That's I'm mean, happy to oblige. I was the one who suggested pushing in you into the Lazarus pit. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're fine. It reminds you of... You you think you think back to uh, the last time you guys were down here, and you're like, if Joran can go in there, I can go in there, and uh, you dive headfirst into once again raw sewage. The second Constitution saving throw I'm going to need you to make for me is versus infection for having open wounds. Oh, uh, not again! It's the it's crab wounds part two. Okay, no. I don't think I just can take it. That's oh, a no. not pass there. It's all right, buddy. I'll heal you when you get back. How much HP did you have? He's currently under the water at the moment, Ruby, I'm afraid. The next one is going to be consistent poison damage round. I'm going to... Say you can swim how far again? Uh, it's equal to your movement speed, right? Or is it I think it's diff I think it's different with the manta ray. Yeah, I think that have... one's like a pretty big bone. Um sixty feet. Sixty feet, yeah. Okay. So you yeah. can move sixty feet in a round or as an action in the water. Uh it is you have a swimming speed of sixty feet. Oh shit. So you can go so... hundred and twenty feet. So you can make your way down to the bottom of this. Oh, yeah, 100% die. doing that. Okay, so Constitution saving throw versus poison for the first round. Okay. On its way. No dice? You take 14 poison damage. That is inconvenient. <clears throat> you... Make your way down to the bottom where you can see... Uh, well, you can't really see anything, actually. You're feeling around for your net, and when you grab it, you can feel the lip of what is rough stone that was burrowed out by the... Uh, you grab your hand around the net, and you push off to just... <laughs> Aquaman your way back out. Give me yes. a, another one for poison first, though. Okay, it's fine. It's all good. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. You do not take poison damage on the second. Right, I uh, fly out of it like a salmon and flop on the ground and <clears throat> just spew. And then I'll go, because he's still drunk, he'll just get up and go, <laughs> What do you think of that? <laughs> Told you I'd get my fucking net back. <laughs> What um, a day off. Best day ever. Best day yeah, ever. Yeah. With Ruby down in the fucking suit. And Ruby's got the chest and she's like shaking it over her. Best <laughs> day ever. Best day ever. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely loving it. Okay, speaking of the chest, um, I have now acquired it and saved it into my possession because we found it again. Okay. Um, may I suggest we um return to safety and heal up before we continue trying to open this thing? No, let's find another sewer. <laughs> can, I, can we please not throw it 700 feet into the air so that it compacts through the earth and lands in the sewer? You, you tell me you haven't had a fucking whale of a time down here, my friend. <laughs> oh, goodness. So you're going right, to okay. back out of the sewer? Yes, please. Can we just get somewhere safe, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, off we go. Off we go. You make your way back out the way that you came in. There's the chiming of people working on the docks. Uh, the ship's being built once more, and the smell of ocean breeze overtakes the smell of poo poo and rot. Uh, except for Monty, is still a bastion of this foul stench and is still caked in 
Okay. Um, because we're near the we're near the docks, right? You're at the docks. Ruby, the sewage right, has an outlet uh, to the ocean. Ruby has no intention of uh, letting um, Monty sit on her furniture while she's covered in poopy water. So she's just gonna drop on the pier with her little legs dangling off the side, and she's gonna look at this box. <laughs> she's gonna be like, right. <laughs> Mm. Sat on the edge of the pier with it. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, right, okay. So she starts twiddling the side uh, of the handle, and she's like, right, the, 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 the... perhaps <laughs> we should try figuring out the puzzle <laughs> for ourselves, Monty. Right. And we let me just. Do... Yeah, we let... can do this. I, be- I, be- I believe you. What we need is some more drinks, right? I'll get us some drinks. I'll go get another keg from the, the 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 tavern, the good tavern, not the shit tavern. Um, but first of all, I think I need to have a quick wash because it's been seventy days and I've swam through shit twice. So <laughs> I'm just gonna, and he's just gonna recreate. The last time was like months ago. Why did you swim through shit recently, other than this time? <laughs> D- d- don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What he does in his own—he's not even going to show. We're just going to push him in the ocean. It's fine. What he does in his own time is his business. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> look, 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 look. We're getting closer together. Monty's sharing with Ruby his hygiene habits, which are clearly a business. Told you about his dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're getting to know each other. Yeah. Clearly, hey, a lot well, more so than I expected. <laughs> I'm gonna re recreate uh, like uh, do, do like a weird Monty Baywatch thing, where he like he, he goes in the water, but then he like walks back up onto the beach, and he's like he f- he like goes to flick his hair, but he hasn't got any hair, so he just does that, and um, he's just slowly wa- like slow motion jogs up the beach, um, <laughs> just in his um, in his all of his shirtless glory, and um, sits back next to Ruby. Sunbaskers uh, drinking in the last rays of the golden light as the sun is setting on the horizon. See this shit covered man enter the water and re emerge clean once more. It's beautiful. <clears throat> this, this, this is clippable. <laughs> this episode. Um, <laughs> Great moment, honest. Thing is that I haven't been doing any of it, so you've got to go watch it all and do it all yourself. I'm sorry. So <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's try and solve this puzzle then. Shall okay, we? I'm going to use logic because I'm a lot more sober now than I was when we started this. Um, sure. okay. So I think, I think, right, we're going to do an Arcana check. Wait, no. Okay. Yeah, Arcana. Um, actually. Make just a straight intelligence roll with advantage. Mm-hmm. Ah, the hell with it. You can take your arcana. Make an arcana check with advantage. Because it's a dwarven puzzle box. Who didn't realize it was a dwarven puzzle box? <laughs> she was steaming. You're drunk. It's okay. In the meantime, I go to the bar, get more drinks, and we're sat down with some fresh ale. Uh, yeah. By the time that Monty returns, um, you're spending time doing this. You, you've recalled, like, okay, you're a little bit more sober, so you're like, okay, I, I, I've, I know I'm at least a little bit familiar with these. I probably had, like, a small one as a child that my father gave to me. Um, not anywhere near as complex as this one, probably, but you, you, you think about it, and you're like, okay. By the time Monty comes back, there's a few different things that have changed about the box. There's, like, some kind of ornate spot that surrounds the keyhole that you thought was just, like, set into the ironwork itself. But you found that when you rotate that hinge on the uh, the handle at 45 degrees, that can be turned a whole 360 degrees. Like a... what's the word? Um, locksmith. You, you listen for it until you hear the three... Clicks, and then once you finally heard the third one, one of the bands on the outside has sprung off. You search around, and then you feel the right one, and that one is a little bit loose, too. So, again, you twist that one. Now the front part doesn't move. 
the back one starts to freely rotate. And by the time that Monty returns, you are like probably in the middle of of rotating and listening for the click on the uh, like a combination lock. Just like a little goblin with her legs hanging off the pier, and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> right, so the back of it's clicked open then. Yeah, you are getting very close to solving it. <laughs> With one more successful hole, I will say that you can probably do Right, now I'll throw it from a great height. <laughs> no, Monty! Throw those drinks down your neck if you need to throw something. <laughs> They're already gone. Um, so I did Arcana last time. Uh, do you want me to do something different? Insight or? Sure. Uh, usually you make us do different things on these rolls. <laughs> Would you like to use your creation? Yes. <laughs> That's a shame because you got a nat 20. Mm. That's a good joke. I need to do that someday. Yeah. <laughs> you absolutely need to, to no, put out that No, but you did get um, above the DC. So, as you, uh, Monty returns with the, the tankard, probably making a little bit of noise, which I imagine you probably have to shush him so that you can listen closely. Uh, <laughs> finally, you, uh, you figure out the rest of the puzzle to this box. You drive home the last of the combinations of rotations, and you can hear the, uh, the secondary latch click open, and then you... Put your hand on either side of those secondary latches, click it, and the whole thing lets out a mighty. That totally just slammed on my fingers. Are you okay? <laughs> um, oh yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, only, it's only a little box. It's not like... oh. do, 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 do. Right. Is it booty? What have we found? When you open the box, you can see within. For such a large container, it's kind of empty. There is five... Don't tell me it's fucking empty. ...rather ornate golden coins. And a very, very slim rod with a crystal at the end of it. Hmm. Can I do a check on it, please? I'll take the coin. You can have the coin. I mean, I'd check them to make sure they're not cursed, to be honest. Too late. <laughs> is that, like, is that the conversation that you guys are having? I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess so now. So when you pick <laughs> up this is how- the first coin and you guys are saying that, you can hear your voice coming out of the other coins. Oh... <gasps> They're like they're communication like goals. Communicating coins. <laughs> Communicating coins. Um, Ruby like she'll whistle into it because like she's a technical person who likes investigating these things. So she'll be like, <laughs> and like see if she can one two one two one two. Okay. Um, but she's gonna want to look at that rod as well. Can I just say I love the fantasy fantasy grounds like. I could just see Derek editing the uh, text as I've opened up that. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. see, see, us, see it live, it's so cool. Right, A anyway. rod of absorption. While holding this rod, you can use your reaction to absorb a spell. Oh, ha, ha. I love a rod. <laughs> awesome. It's an awesome, awesome, way, awesome thing. Oh. I've seen some really cool things of the, oh the absorption. Oh my god, just a second, just a second, just a second, just a second. Babes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have it. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not going to deprive you of that. That absorbent rod. <laughs> the absorbent rod. That is epic. Um, can absorb and store up to 50 levels of energy over the course of its existence. Once the rod absorbs 50 levels of energy, it can't absorb more. Um, but you can still hit people with it. Yeah, when you become attuned to the rod, you know how many levels of energy the rod has absorbed. Okay, I don't think I can... I think I can have one more, actually, attuned item. 
<laughs> Hashtag absorbent rod. So, absorbent rod. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this elegant crystal rod is blue and houses a large blue diamond at the tip. It can extend to the reach of a cane sized for whomever. Hey, go, Monty, that one's just for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I mean, are we good people? Are we going to bring this back to that guy in the bar and say, here you go? Or are you going to go around absorbing shit? Well, no, I'm going to keep it, obviously. But um, my, uh, yeah. my concern actually is what was causing the negative effects on the tavern keeper. Um, I think he's just a shit business person, <laughs> to be honest. I think he's looking for excuses, but what he really needs to do is look within. He says in a really drunken, slurred way. Ruby's quite sober at this time because you were drinking while she was figuring out the box. Um, <clears throat> AKA helping. Yeah. Um, these coins are quite handy, so we're definitely going to take them and the rods. Um, I... <clears throat> I think uh, we just continue uh, leaving the tavern keeper there as he is um, and uh, do business with him because we, we might be able to get some decent ales as you we go mean, gallivanting. Do business, i.e., extort the fucker. Yeah, but Monty, we can't say that. We need to make friends with the governor. We have to look Ooh. legit. Oh, uh, yeah. No one can hear me. It's a well-known fact that no one can fucking hear you when you're drunk. <laughs> so, that's that's the rule. No I one can hear you when you're drunk. No, no one can see you if you're a halfling. Exactly that. <laughs> I basically don't fucking exist at the moment. I can do what I want. So, what do you want to do with that knowledge? Finish the day as we started back in the tavern. Five what time gold, is it, by the way? Gold coins. It's sunset yeah. now, so it's like probably 7 p.m. Ruby, when you no. place your hand. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say no sign of speed yet, then. No. Uh, Ruby, when you place your hand upon this crystal rod, you can almost feel something uncoiling as if it's long awaited the touch. Of something, someone. Sounds like me. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to make a joke, and you went for it. I'm so proud of you. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, there was a moment where I was just eating the coin. I was thinking, do I? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, when you say it coils, like, is it a bad kind of, like, no, feeling? Like no, welcoming feeling. So, like... An uncoiling. Like, like a... It's finally releasing. Is it... I mean, not that Monty would fucking know, but above the table... It... Actually, no, it can't be above the table, because it's an in-game thing. Ignore me entirely. What is I want to know no, is... No. It... Is it... Is it the person that died... The captain. Well, did we break the curse? Oh, maybe the curse of the thing. I was thinking maybe, like, above the table now. I, I say above the table. This is a straight-up metagaming, so please just stop me if you want. I, I won't say anything. <laughs> well, I I'm thinking that the captain either got absorbed into this thing after he died, like his soul or something, or... Um, Mash's point, which is the it's a curse that's been absorbed into it, and that's what's fucked up the the bartender and his business. It's one or the other, isn't it? Or is it come, something completely different, and we're gonna get fucked over? When I die, am I gonna get absorbed into my rod? I hate you. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> Damn it! Our corner check, if you want, Ruby. Sorry, but I had to get all that out. I needed to think out loud to make sense. Well, of it. yeah, no, but there could also be the fact that it is now attuning itself to me instead of like the guy and that it was previously oh. attuned to. So, like, I didn't think it was that nefarious. But let's do an arcana check and see how badly this is going to turn out. 
a natural 20 for a total of 23. Fucking hell. Out. How come you keep getting 20s? I get fucking seven ones. He's the one lightning session. rod for good luck. You're the lightning rod for bad luck. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. In that life and nice. in booty. I just meant in the, the dice. <laughs> Dude, I got absolutely obliterated by my own spell last session. You can't. Do... <laughs> she needs this. Dice she needs this win. Yeah. <laughs> dice given the guys. Dice take away. All right. So, you guys can collaborate to come up with the two questions. Full answer. I might not answer it fully. I'll answer well, how much I feel like. Above the table questions right now. Yeah, you guys can collaborate together and then tell me what, what your two questions are. Right, if you ever wanted to know the size of Derek's penis, that's the time. <laughs> Not that kind of question. I'm only joking, man. Mm -hmm. It's all in jest. It's all in the uh, the aid of entertainment. What's on your um, Amazon wish list? Uh, no, um... <laughs> uh, probably nothing. I don't really make those. So, um, right, okay. We know it's not a bad thing, but we need to know what the significance of the uncoiling is. Yeah, and then we also need to know if the curse is lifted off the tavern. Like, is the, cur is the, the negative effect still in effect? Is that not what we need to know? Yeah, I think I think that, that that that's about right. But I have a strong, strong suspicion <laughs> that the owner of the tavern is just using it as an excuse because he's just a lazy fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's true. Which okay. would be a hilarious and sad. <laughs> Okay, um... You sneaky bastard. I He's done this to me a bunch of times now as well. I love this um... <laughs> Not written down okay. anywhere, but I feel like everybody should do Um, so... When Ruby touches the, um, staff and she feels this connection to the staff, and something releasing as if it's been the rod, not a staff, right? the rod, rod. Yeah. Um, she, she's like, she's obviously going to be like, the fuck was that? So that's going to be exactly what she's like. She's like, what has just happened? What is it releasing? Is it affecting? Is it affecting me is what she would think. So that would be her initial. What has this done? <laughs> Can't think of a way to so put it. Into you're rephrasing the question: Is what the fuck? Ah, <laughs> uh, what does it? What I mean, like literally, what is the significance of the uncoiling? Because like uncoiling could mean a lot of things. It's ambiguous. You want to, and you probably do, like, very quickly move your hand away when you feel this because it takes you back to a conversation that you've had with Greg where he he's mentioned that there's some some magics that you have to be particularly careful with as they have a tendency to leave them an imprint on anyone that would wield them or anyone that would attempt to harness it. And as you feel Greg's my face for the cold, empty grasp of nothing in your hand when you pull it back. You realize that the curse activated by the blood of the captains keeping it and touching this rod has been lifted from the place of the captain's death now and bestowed onto you. That mate. So I'm cursed. Yep. I thought you said it wasn't a bad thing. Not fully bad. 
You said he didn't feel bad. That's just fun seven. Doesn't feel bad. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Okay, so I am now first. It, like, is there a, an above table mechanic that I need to worry about now? You cannot unattune this item. You can lose it, but you cannot <laughs> unattune from this item. Okay, so this is mine Feels forever so now. Like you might discover more I, about the curse as time goes on. I feel this is. Does it make you lazy? <laughs> it makes Does it make you lazy? I'm thinking that's what it is, and then it, that's. <sighs> But it can absorb spells, right? What's so your I mean, second question? Be... What's on your Amazon wish list? <laughs> oh. Um, oh no, it's oh. Paul here to drop. No, no, no. Let him, drop, in. Let let him dra drop on. as spend as many souls as you want. Give them. <laughs> Right, um, I actually don't think I really need a question now, because, like, it's that, like, I'm cursed, and the <laughs> curse has been lifted from the place it was. It's now transferred onto me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have any in-game mechanics to worry about. Just you know of? Some... But yet. Uh, yeah. Can I suggest uh, that we potentially get answers about this dead captain? Or is that too caring? No, I'm actually... I don't know how we would know it is what, why I didn't bother asking. Because, like... If we can tell that the blood from the captain is what started the curse... Either way, you're fucking cursed right now, so... Yeah, but maybe, like... Maybe I could remove the curse with... Why don't you ask that? Can I remove the curse by finding <laughs> the captain and killing him? No, he's already dead! The first mate killed him. You ever thought about being a PI? <laughs> I'm a I'm a novelist. It's the same yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I, the if you once, remember, the first what, mate killed him. What once was whole is now lost. Mend the broken, and you will be. Are there shards like of this thing, this crystal? Then no, it's whole. Completely perfect. I think we should fucking break it. And then fix it again. And then it's fixed. I mean, I have got mending as a cantrip, so I could definitely break it and put it back together again, right? But are you not talking about the person? Like, oh, it's, are you this talking is way about the person who bled being made whole again? Um, is that what the ambiguity was? I don't know what the word ambiguity means, but yeah. Ah! About the table, I, about Dude, the table I do I do know what ambiguity <laughs> means. I just Yeah. Um I'm not telling you. Right, yet. okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Great. Right, okay. Well, do you know what? Get the Ruby's the happy media. that the curse is no longer in the tavern, and if the tavern's still shit, we can fix that with surplus supplies. And uh, we now have communicating gold coins, which I think's baller, and me and Monty should definitely have one each and give them to it's our friends well. when we see them. Um, and uh, maybe give one to forget. Might be a good Ooh, idea. That's a good idea. Um... Or wouldn't you want to give one to Jeremy to see how trade's going? Or, or you can leave one here with Suna. Oh, yeah, Suna would be a good one, actually. Yeah, Suna. Suna's staying in Peridot. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. We'll give one to Suna. Yeah. Staying back and after the shop in case that lich shows back up. Fuck, yes. That's a great idea. Yeah, we'll give it to Suna. And... And we've got the Cursey Rod. Um, I, I will... Yeah. I'll deal with that when we come to it. Overall, I think our adventure's been quite successful, don't you, Monty? I do, I do, yeah. I, f I do think we should go back and see if the curse has been lifted on that pub, just to make sure. Maybe it's a bit busier now, and that's a good sign. Yeah? Cool, we'll just right. have a, uh, and, and he'll just get up, and he's still in his speedo from when he was doing a Baywatch um, 
uh, thing. <laughs> and now he's just going to like stumble over to the, the pub. Clearly, absolutely fucked. <laughs> yeah, so as you guys... Um... We stow the chest and the coins and the rod so that the owner doesn't see them first. What do you yes, stow? very well, sir. Um, I'm going to... I don't know where... I don't know what you're going to do with the chest. chest. The rod I, is not too difficult. You could put that in your pack or, I mean, you could... Your knowledge, he doesn't know what it is. We're, we're on the port, right? Mm -hmm. So what? instead of going up the port, we'll go up the sideway via the blacksmith. We're going to throw our shit in the window and then we're just going to enjoy ourselves off the side and be like, yeah, we're at the pub. Yeah. Oh. Right, so let me just get this straight. You want to go up for either thing? You want me to I shit am a on? Sniffy. You want me to shit on the window, <laughs> and then we'll. I uh, just want to make sure I'm getting this right because look, I've done it before, but the people in the restaurant were fucking angry. So, so we love this chest, which is now open at Jeremy. We're like, Way! <laughs> you guys opened it, killer. Way! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, then we just continue on down the slope. We don't take the stairs. We just go straight down the slope. And right under the... us, like, like a cage yeah. on a hill. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Monty, like, rolls down sideways. Just, <laughs> just for no fucking reason. We could get him a barrel. Just, like, push him I remember down. remember riding on hills as a kid? That shit was so fun. Yeah, man. All right. So you make your way inside, and you were aware of it just because, I mean, it was, like, in the back of your mind. It wasn't really important, but... While you were at the dock, a large ship came in to port, and in the amount of time that you guys were finagling with the box and deciding on what to do, going and dropping it off at the smithy and then riding down the hill, um, a sizable amount of sailors have made their way off of that vessel and are lined up out in the cavern waiting to get room and board and begin their drinking for the night. You, uh, you push past... Um, I mean, probably throwing your weight around, you know, like, hey, we own a lot in this town. I don't know. However you guys get past, eventually. We're drunk still, so yeah, we're going to be yelling and... Just be drunk and assholes about it. <laughs> <Just fucking. laughs> what was he called again? Um, the... Gordon. Gordon. Gordon! 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 Mm -hmm. See this? This is our doing. Oh, our what? doing. What? The, you guys Gordon! <laughs> He's like, he looks like a completely different person. Like, he, he his face is bright and uh, his cheeks are rosy. His eyes have this, like, spark behind them again. And he's grinning ear to ear, like, just looking at you guys stoked that you've... I mean, he, you're telling awesome. him that you were going to fix it and now you fixed it? He's like, he's so happy right now. Are the glasses clean? Yeah. Some, some Two have. ales, Blades. Two ales. Is Larry all right? Uh, Larry. Don't forget Larry. Yeah, I thought three, you left three ales. Uh, oh, okay. I thought you meant. Yeah. So uh, the the ale is just Larry's no longer... been dancing this whole time. Um, since uh, since you guys set off, he has uh, poured out the old ale, and uh, he was able to go and get himself uh, uh, fresh, large casks of it that he has had rolled in and set up for stock. He pours you a fresh, nice, foamy headed ale, slams them down on the table, and says, "Hey, you said you were gonna get this curse lifted." You're drinking here for free, as long as you live. Hey! Ah, as long as I live. Uh, <laughs> well, don't worry. You, you have now become the most valuable person in my fucking life. We love you, you man. We should go on a we trip together. <laughs> we'll have seven kegs, please. If that's all right with you. He goes, let's... Uh, let's Let's start. You got like blanches for a moment. And he's like, "Let's start you off with these ales, and we'll see where the night takes us." Ah, uh, you're sensible. See, good business brain. He points to, to him while looking at Ruby. Good bit. See, always knew this guy who could turn it around. Always knew. I didn't call him lazy once, did I? <laughs> Just uh, really fucking drunk at this point. I think that's where we'll uh, where we'll end the session. Yeah, we, we end on uh, Monty and Ruby and One-Eyed Larry with the uh, half-hand bard um, on the on the top, just doing a she-shanty, like, all together. Like, hey! <laughs> Monty and Ruby's day off, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>